Arlington Board of Selectmen um, for our Monday meeting for on Monday, December 8th. It is a little past 7.15 and I do call this meeting to order. Uh, just a reminder that ACMI is filming tonight, so uh, please smile widely when you are on camera. Um, we'll get right into it. And we are getting started with a presentation from the Arlington High School Generation Citizens Project to, and they are discussing the, uh, they have a parking proposal for the Arlington High School area. So please come to the microphone. Hi everyone, if you could all just introduce yourself and um, we'll get right into it. Thank you. So um, I'm Taylor, I'm here with my peers, Alana, Kendall, Tano, and Bella. Um, as you said, we're from Arlington High School with a program called Generation Citizen through Tufts University. They're an acti active citizenship program that mentors a high school class to address a program in their area. So we chose over the last semester to address the parking problem around our school and we're here to present our proposal. Yeah, we're all set. Thank you. Okay, so right now we are passing out the proposal that we made. Um, and I'm Bella, I'm a senior. Um, so students will obtain a parking permit that will either be a sticker or a ticket that will go on the student's car. Um, you or the school administration can provide at a reasonable cost for target areas around and in front of the school. Um, you, police, and the school will be monitoring the designated parking areas where students will be to make sure everyone is abiding by these rules. Um, you and administration can take parking permits away at any given time due to improper conduct that a student commits. And the, these permits are a privilege, not a right. Students must be aware that these can be taken away at any given time. Um, with the money that has been acquired from these permits, it is imperative that signs are put up in these designated areas for people to be aware that we can park at this time. Um, the nearest available parking lot where students might be able to park is not your average Joe's, which is approximately a half mile away, 11 minutes on foot, and with bad weather conditions, conditions, it's about 20 minutes away. So students have their own rights and privileges to drive their own vehicle that they have been given from their parents to school if they please, but having no place to park is an inconvenience. There are certain elements of the MBTA that make public buses an unreliable and inconvenience to us. Um, students should be able to attend extracurriculars, extracurriculars, sports, or jobs after school without being worried that their car has been ticketed or towed. By having a definite parking area for students within the vicinity of the school, kid, kids can attend school with greater advantages. Hi, um, my name's Alana and I'm a junior at Arlington High School and um, so what we did before drafting the proposal is we put together a survey and we sent it out to the student body to get their support and a large number of students responded to a form that we sent out and there was a huge number of uh, students saying of supporting it and saying there were 60 percent of the students said that they were one out of ten satisfied with the current parking situation in Arlington High School and there is there are students parking in the areas that we have designated that is legal, but there are no other places for the students to park. Um, and this is an issue that has been prevalent for a while. And before there was parking, there was parking on Mass Ave, but that was given to teachers. And the lots at Arlington High School are just for the teachers and administration. So there's really no place for the students. And because it does only apply to the upperclassmen, there aren't that many spots that need to be given, just a reasonably small area, and it's something that the students really believe in and really feel is an issue that they would like to address. Hi, I'm Kendall, and I'm a junior at Arlington High School, and we talked to um, a few of the administrators at our school. We talked to our, prin our principal, Dr. Janger, 
and um, two of our deans, Ms. Tivnan and Mr. DiLoretto. And Dr. Jenger, he gave his full support of our proposal. Um, he thinks, he believes um, in what we're saying that students, if they're allowed to drive to school, should be able to park somewhere. Um, Ms. Tivnan, she also agrees and thinks that, oh, um, she <laughs> agrees and thinks that we should all have places to park, whether it be on side streets or um, in other parking lots such as like CVS parking lots, but that's a different idea which we didn't touch on. And Mr. DiLoretto, he uh, uh, gave input on how he has been working at our high school for like many years and throughout his whole time working here, parking for students has always been a problem. And he even went uh, to the extent to say that if this didn't, this proposal did not get passed, he would wanna try to find a way to take about 20 spots from the teacher parking and give it to students like through a raffle or something. And um, I can read their letter, which they wrote for us. And this is signed by our vice principal, our principal, our one, like, and both of the deans. And it says, to whom it may concern, we are writing this letter in support of the students in Mr. Pay's Symposium on Current World Issues class at Arlington High School. Students in this class take on real world issues in the Arlington High School community and work towards solutions. We recognize and support the effort put forth by this year's symposium students as they try to address the lack of student parking at Arlington High School. Arlington High School has limited space for parking that must be shared among faculty, central office administration, and the town offices housed at the high school. Accommodating parking for all has been a struggle for many years and the high school has not had the ability to offer any student parking spaces. The symposium students have worked diligently to develop a proposal to balance the needs of the community and students. This is the model of civic engagement that we hope for among our students. We encourage the town selectmen to engage the, with them on this issue to raise questions and problem solve with the students. We welcome the opportunity for further discussion and collaboration on this topic. Um, we're going to hand out a map along with the, sheet, with the streets that are going to be affected with this parking proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're done with our formal speech. We were wondering if you guys had any questions about the proposal. Thank you um, very much for being here tonight. Um, once again, um, we had a group la at our last meeting as well talking about solar power. And this is a um, really great program that the high school is running um, in collaboration with Tufts. And um, you guys and girls have definitely chosen a um, an important and incredibly controversial um, subject. And it is, uh, it's very clear that you put uh, quite a bit of work into it and, um, I, and I do appreciate that. So is there any comments or questions from my colleagues? Joe? Sure, well thank you for all of the work that you put into this. I know that um, I think at least one of the students had actually contacted me on this, this mm -hmm. project. I assume my, my colleagues as, as well. So um, thank you, I, th I think that um, <clears throat> You definitely approach this well and you know, surveying your fellow students, talking to your fellow administrators, talking to some of us. I was curious, did you by any chance survey any of the residents um, on those area streets to get a sense of, of what some of their concerns were um, with the parking situation in the area? Yes, um, we had been planning to and on the day that we chose, we were not able to get a significant turnout of people to go to the doors. So we did not end up being able to ask the residents that we had planned to. We apologize. Okay, okay. I think that's that certainly it's a key. Um, my other question about the proposal is, I think you um, you lay out here, you know, one of the big needs is our students who have jobs directly after school they need to get to um, immediately. Um, it seems, and you mentioned the bus buses being unreliable or whatnot. But am I correct that the uh, work? requirement is a, is a more important consideration for, for you? Um, yes, we think that it's more important for people to be able to get to work. Yeah, 
Um, so g given that, I'm just curious, I, I noticed that you, you, your proposal says that if there are more permit applications than the new system can cater to, that the upper class would get the permits first. Um, was there any thought to maybe um, judging it based on who had job needs first and then opening it up that well, way? Or? Normally, it is the upperclassmen who have the jobs, as yeah. underclassmen are usually under the age of 16 and aren't able to work. So because of that, we understood that underclassmen would have more probability of having jobs, and that because of that, they would be the ones more in need of the permit. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for the work on this. Diane. Oh, you want to go first? Good. Well, you're more oh. familiar with this than I am. Go ahead. So. You may cover some of my questions. Well, I just a couple of points. I want to, first of all, compliment you. I hope you all are going to get A's because you've done <laughs> an excellent job here. Um, I w would be curious, would, if you had a guess how many permits you think are necessary, mm -hmm. how, many, how many cars do you think you would need permits for? On our survey, we um, asked... You have to come to the mic, sorry. There's millions watching at home <laughs> um, right now. <laughs> <laughs> on, some sur on the survey that we sent out, there were some questions pertaining to whether people plan on driving to school, and she'll, she'll answer that. Um, so I believe that there was, there was 154 responses and 40, uh, excuse me, 57 were um, seniors and 46, I believe, were juniors and about 95% all said yes, they have a license slash JOL um, slash permit and or, and or would be planning on driving themselves to school when they obtain that. So we think about 40 or so, because also we are trying to encourage carpooling, especially for the um, environmental aspect of that. And so when it's obviously legal for friends that they can carpool to school together. And then because we see um, in the mornings, there's a huge line of traffic of parents trying to drop their kids off because there is no parking spaces and or the kids are underclassmen but it's just a huge toll of just all this gas coming up but if we had parking spaces then we could eliminate this huge long line or decrease it and so that was kind of an aspect of our plan also okay well well done thank you very much Damn. you did ask one of my questions so. um i want to thank you taylor bella alana kendall and was it ben Tano. Tano. Oh, oh. Wouldn't, wasn't even close. <laughs> For coming in um, on this issue, um, as you probably know, the reason the signs went up was we were contacted by the neighbors who live on the street who say the signs are there, and for them the, tra the parking had gotten out of control and asked the board to enforce it. So that's where we got where we're at. Um, I, I and my colleagues have had many discussions on this very issue. I can perhaps give you a couple of things that we can work in concert on. Um, I have spoken along with the rest of the board um, with the town manager about this issue because a coach down at the high school, I have to drop all my equipment, get everything out, and go find somewhere to park because there's only like three, the AD and two staff people. So I definitely feel your pain there. Um, there's a few solutions, um, you know, tr to try to think creatively, and we've already had this discussion. One of them is the parking lot that has that rotary that takes up a ridiculous amount of space on Mill Street, um, and the town manager has spoken with our public works director, I want to say back in September, August, September, having this conversation, because I said, you know, barring any fire safety um, issue, that seems like a big waste of space, as well as, you know, with the high school, and all of this would have to be done in concert with the high school school committee administration. They, they would have to sort of drive this. But we were trying to think of, knowing that these signs were going up, what could we look at? So one of the things that um, I would encourage you all, and, and through the town manager's office or the chairman, to um, follow up on that, because the DPW director thought had a few ideas of, of how to increase some spaces out there. Um, the other thing, I think it's great that you go into the house dean, dealer, De Loretto, he's a fantastic person, worked for him previously as AD. Um, and I think part of the school's um, responsibility is sort of what he's saying, that if we can't find some sort of solution, perhaps he can get 10 or 20 spots that are designated to staff. I definitely would encourage, you know, talking to the school committee, especially with the high school, there's talk of renovating it. 
maybe they can start looking at some spaces now. The other thing that I had discussed with the town manager, and again, please follow up with the chairman on this, is to see if there's any way, the Grove Street parking lot is filled to the max. It's, it's parked there. But I believe it's town-owned land. Um, the manager was gonna look into this, or it could be school committee land, sort of the unofficial road that connects Grove Street parking lot all the way up to the high school, perhaps we could, in concert with the school committee and the administration, redesign that and get some parking spaces there. And I had envisioned anywhere from 60 to 72, you know, when I um, sat down. I think it's fantastic that you guys are doing this because we always have to be careful of, you know, there's a town side, there's a school side, but there's a t town of Arlington. Um, I think working also with the chairman and the town manager, but also with, um, the school committee um, and Dr. Bodie would be a great way to go. And then the last thing that we were discussing is possibly if we could look at how many of the Russell Street parking lot, um, the little side street that comes right out onto Mill Street and it's right behind Buzzle Field. Mm -hmm. We do give out permits there um, to people who work there. I, it's a little bit more of a walk, um, but just trying to think of ways to kind of piecemeal together. Uh, and then the last thing you could do that would be really radical that I would do <laughs> when I was in high school, I got the high school closed for two days on an asbestos issue, but that's my heyday. Um, you might want to approach with Dr. Bodie or Dr. Jenger, uh, possibly them looking at any of the adjacent land and see if there's any way, perhaps eminent domain, and in order to, um, and you may have already started to do that and found out the answer is no. Yeah. You did. The, the, um, the field in the back that's used for JV, lacrosse, mm -hmm. and um, football, there's like very, not biohazard, but very hazardous waste underneath the field. And so uh, Mr. DiLoretto, he was looking to that land to try to create a parking lot, but it, he was told that it would not be a good idea and unsafe. But I mean, thinking outside of the box, sort of yeah. extending. I mean, it's just a, yeah. a way to go sometimes. Um, well, Miss Tivenin, she that was one of her hopes for how we could solve this student parking issue, and she hasn't figured out a way to buy out those lots, and also she's not sure how we would do it or how much it would cost, and whether the cost of buying out those lots would be cheaper than in, like imposing these this proposal that we just proposed. Mm -hmm. um, so. I mean, we could look into the pricing differences. Yeah. So. You know what? I, I would look into it because you'd certainly get everybody's attention. And then sometimes when you go down one road, you, you take a left or a right and you find the solution. You don't continue on down that road. But I think it's fantastic what you're doing. I don't want you to think that and any of us are not um, concerned about this. We knew this was going to be an unintended consequence when the neighbors who asked us to enforce those signs. Um, but I would encourage you to uh, work with the chairman um, in terms of, you know, I believe Adam was going to have our public work director, Mr. Rademacher, make a report at the beginning of the year, but with the caveat that this board can't do anything unless the school committee and uh, superintendent uh, sort of in the dri driver's seat are at the forefront because, you know, it's, we can't tell them how to do their job. Not that we would want to, but it's definitely an ins uh, issue I'm sensitive to, and I'm thrilled that you guys are doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. So. Thank you again um, very much. This is uh, very cool what you're doing in this. Um, this is how you, you know, kind of uh, drive change in town and through public policy. And um, I, I think it's a really good experience, especially for, um, for high school students. Um, so again, thank you. And uh, please move do. Move Second. We have a move to receive. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And, um, and again, please do follow up with me um, if you have any other questions. And good luck at Civics Day, which is what I understand this is for. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Moving on. Discussion and vote uh, property tax uh, classification. Mr. Tierney. Mr. Feely. It's Mr. Chairman, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Chairman, we're here for our annual classification hearing, uh, the board's annual classification hearing. Um, but before we start, I'd like to introduce our new director of assessing, Paul Tierney, who joined us October 14th and, and uh, got hit right in the middle of this certification, so he's been pretty busy since. Um, he has received an awful lot of help from Mr. Robert Greeley, who really was a savior in this. Uh, well, unfortunately, I think he spent so many hours 
on this that he's down sick tonight, so he's not with us this evening. He's and afraid to come before me, Kevin. I, I, I can understand that, yes. <laughs> because you are the older brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And Mary with Stanley O'Connor, my other board member, is with us also. So um, I'm going to ask Paul to go through the, the booklet you got. We apologize again. We just got tentative approval Friday noontime, so it didn't get out in time for your uh, iPads. But uh, hopefully you can get the information from this anyhow. That's Paul. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, again, I am Paul Taney, the Director of Assessments. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, if you open your booklets, uh, the first page um, just breaks out the 2014 levy limit, um, add the 2.5% plus new growth, which will give us a levy limit for 2015. Uh, if we go down to the next column, we add in the debt exclusion, the water and sewer debt, and that'll give us the maximum uh, total to be raised for the town. Uh, go down one more, and it will give us the amount to be raised plus the total taxable value in the town multiplied by a thousand, uh, which gives us a tax rate this year of thirteen dollars and fifty-five cents. We go on to the next page. Just spells out um, the minimum residential factor. Well, oh, uh, Kevin, do you, you want to? Huh? Yeah, why don't we do questions at okay. the end? Thank you. Uh, second page just breaks down the mis uh, minimum residential factor. Uh, we, like you can see we have 94% uh, residential in the town. Uh, third page just slips this the uh, Mass General Law, which allows the shift if we so decide to do it. Uh, the next page uh, breaks down what would happen to the potential tax bills if we went to a shift. Um, if we went to 5%, you could see the commercial industrial properties would increase by $339 and the residential only decreased by $16.74. So that's just to give you an idea of what the breakdown would be if we did vote for a shift. Uh, the, third, the next page is just the LA-4. It breaks down the um, different homes and what their values were, how many parcels throughout the town in each category, along with their value. Total taxable values down at the bottom. That uh, gives you an account of all the parcels in town. Uh, next page just lists the tax rates throughout the years. Our proposed uh, rate for 15 is at the bottom. Next page is the LA-13, which details um, Dating values throughout the year, the amount of growth uh, that we um, we had this year. Next page uh, breaks down by category. You know how did we got to the tax rate? Uh, gives the average assessed value, what the average tax bill would be this year, uh, the amount of growth, and the last page. Just give some examples of neighboring towns, what their average tax bill would be this year. And we would like to uh, recommend a residential option of one, which would leave the tax rate at 13.55 per assessed value. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, do we have questions from the board? Mr. Greeley. So. I, I'm, it, it, this may be in here, and I just missed it. So th uh, this year, total property value is seven billion seven hundred seventy million. Correct. Right. Uh, anybody know what that was last year? Well, it's right next to the seven three. Three, three, seven, second to the last page for 2014. Seven three seventy seven. About three hundred forty. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see it. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Yep. Further questions? Stand. I'd like to move that we set the, oh, unless you wanted to hear from the audience first. Uh, yeah, oh, I think sorry, we will. Sorry, I don't move anything. Um, further questions <coughs> from the board? Joe. No, I just wanted to note um, that if we go forward with the recommendation, the actual tax rate we would be approving would, would be dropping from what it was last year, the, the rate per thousand. I also note that the first time uh, for several years in a row we did have um, 
uh, the Sims debt exclusion was added on to the tax rate, and we've now apparently this is apropos of something we'll be discussing later, but apparently that has now dropped off, and we're um, I guess we'll be discussing that on the balance policy later on. So, thank you, and I, I thank you very much for this work, Paulie, and the board of assessors. Um, I would like to draw everyone's attention to what our neighboring communities are paying, and I and I really think that. We're very fortunate to have such great services, um, particularly, I would say, um, I don't know firsthand, but I'm pretty sure they're better services than what our neighboring communities have, um, and we are um, paying less for our taxes, and, and that's a good thing for Arlington. Um, at this point, I will um, open it up to questions and comments from the audience um, that pertain to the um, tax classification. Gordon? Hi, um, I'm Gordon Jamison. I'm a co-chair of the um, Fiscal Resource Task Group of Vision 2020 here in Arlington. And I'm joined tonight with um, Pete Howard and Brian Hausbach, members of the group uh, in the audience. Um, uh, as those of you on the boards, both boards, um, recall, um, we often come to this very important uh, session, um, which um, is when you set the uh, the um, factor as well as uh, received report of the Board of Assessors. Um, over the years, <coughs> my notes. Over the years, um, we have individually or as a group discussed many different issues, the uh, debt shift, the split rate, overall commercial um, uh, valuation in the town, and we've hoped that, and we think that this has been a constructive interaction with the board and both boards. Um, the handout um, provides a history of the revenues derived from residential and CIP um, beginning um, when the first operating override in the town of Arlington was approved in 1994. And over that 20 year period, um, obviously don't have, uh, I didn't put in this year's numbers, but through fiscal 2014, um, there's been a great increase in the amount of revenue generated in property taxes. Um, overall, it's gone up 136%. Um, but if you look to the left at the bottom, you'll see that there's a, a big differential between the uh, residential and the commercial. And uh, we, are <coughs> we are concerned that uh, you would think in, a, in, when, in rising waters would lift all boats hopefully somewhat evenly, and there seems to be a sort of a discrepancy there. And we, we've, we've discussed this with the board um, in our meetings and also in this public forum in the past. Um, currently, um, we're in the process of uh, trying to attempt to do a, um, in the past we've been d dismissed of, there's options about how, how split rate might make sense if X, Y, or Z happened, which isn't gonna happen. And also, we've presented in the past uh, only a couple items, and, and those have been dismissed as being anecdotal. So in an attempt to be non-anecdotal, we're in the process of trying to do an analysis of some of the commercial property uh, along Mass Ave and Broadway. And uh, Mike Stern, who's a member of the group who I think has spoken to this board during the assessor process earlier this year, um, did some work, and we wanted to flush that out by looking at, the, uh, in particular, the property the land values of commercial properties along Mass Ave and Broadway. Um, we initiated our request for information when then um, board member Daughtery at town meeting said all information that we have should be available to the public. And so we contacted um, Mary in the spring um, and she said, well, we should be able to do this. And then when turmoil 
happened to the board and the assessor proper, uh, I wrote her and said, uh, we'll hold off on this. When fall came, I asked again, and some information has been provided through the assessor's office recently. Um, but the critical information, um, which is the it's a large number of parcels, and the, the data set on, online is not what it used to be. It's very difficult to manage. And we thought it would be simplest and most effective if we actually got the information from the uh, assessor or board of assessors. Um, and so we're looking for some clarifications on the initial data set and um, just thought this would be a good time to, um, without going into the details about what we, what we need, which isn't much more than what we originally got, we thought, uh, this would be a good forum to uh, request for that publicly. You, you know, Gordon, I, um, I, I think I respectfully disagree um, as we're here to, um, you know, talk about our uh, property tax uh, classification and tax rate, and I, and I don't think this is the appropriate venue to um, request information from the board. I think that that should be done um, directly with the Board of Assessors and the Assessor as opposed to so, here. Yeah, okay, so we can respectfully disagree. Um, but at the same time, if the commercial um, property, uh, let's say the uh, land values were not assessed uh, appropriately, then um, the um, commercial property might be um, a larger percentage in town and therefore after that the classification <coughs> might be something that you would take more seriously. So indirectly, I think this is directly um, related to the classification issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. So is there a response from the board? Well, we have uh, followed this over the years. Uh, as far as we can say, we're still not sure where, where they're going with it. Um, we operate in, uh, under the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and and as far as we know, our commercial, industrial, personal properties are valued uh, properly. Um, Market-based market basis value. Um, I do know we're a little late in answering Mr. Jamison's request uh, for some information. And truthfully, because we, our huge staff in the office has been busy, t two people, three people, busy getting the tax rate done, and so we may, there may be some avenues that we can provide them some information. I'd be glad to talk to them about that in the near future, meet with them in the office, and go through through that issue. Thank you very much, Kevin. So, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, is that it, Gordon? Yeah, that's pretty much uh, what we came to uh, do tonight. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Oh, just one thing. Yes. Um, in con um, keeping in consistent with past practice, uh, which I think our committee has helped establish, um, will the uh, information provided to the members of the, the board uh, be posted on the online after accepted by the state? Absolutely. Yes, it will. Um, by the assessors? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Loretti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. I, I'd like to um, reiterate what Mr. Jameson just said about providing the data. Um, I'm not a member of the Fiscal Resources Task Group. I've had some involvement with the past. But I would ask that the board do consider classification. And I want to um, give you a couple anecdotes about the way commercial property is valued. In the current valuation of the Brigham's property, $28.45 million. Sale price at the end of 2013, $50,500,000. Now that gap represents additional taxes that the residents of this town are paying. And to the extent that that property was not properly valued to begin with, it represents lost new growth. Another property that we have in town, another large parcel, is the Claremont Arlington Suites, the hotel near the Cambridge line. The current 2004 valuation of that property, $16.75 million. The sale price at the beginning of 2012, $22.1 million. So I don't agree that our commercial properties are being valued at their full fair market value. And I think one way you may address that, if the assessors really can't get them at their full fair market value, is to do a classification to bring them up so that the effective tax that they're paying is the same as what they would be paying if they were valued properly. Um, 
And I have additional concerns, particularly about the Claremont um, suites. I know your board several years ago designated all of the members of the Board of Assessors as special municipal employees. I understand that um, the Arlington Suites had actually challenged its assessment, challenged the assessment that the Board of Assessors um, you know, uh, made for its property. And therefore, I don't see how an attorney on the Board of Assessors can be representing that same owner in trying to get special permits for that property. I mean, irrespective of what state law says as a conflict of interest, I think just by common sense, you can't play two sides of the same card. And I would ask that you ask town council to look into the possibility of, res of rescinding the special municipal employee designation for the Board of Assessors, and also look at, just as a matter of professionalism within the legal profession, whether, whether that's even possible to represent a party uh, for a particular property on, you know, on, on two different sides of an issue. So um, I realize that at this point you probably won't be able to do with anything with classification this year, but I certainly do hope you'll consider it for future years, and I really hope you'll encourage the Board of Assessors to cooperate with Mr. Jameson so that the problem of underassessment of commercial properties can really be looked at in much more detail in town. Thank you. Thank you. I am very confident that the uh, Board of Assessors will work with Mr. Jameson, and we um, and I am also sure that we are following state law, um, as is the Board of Assessors. So thank you for those comments. Um, further discussion. Seeing none, do we have a motion from the board? I'd like to make a motion that um, we set the rate at a residential option one, as suggested by our Board of Assessors. And second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, board. Thank you. Can nice to meet you. My wife's maiden name is Tierney. You know. Thank you very much, everyone. And um, now that the fun stuff's out of the way, we can um, get to more fun stuff, starting with um, the appointment um, to a, for a new tree committee member. Emily Snyder, please come forward. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Could uh, you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, why you want to be on the committee? Um, I've been a resident of Arlington, East Arlington, for 24 years. Um, for the last two years, I've served on the board of the Arlington Garden Club, where I'm one of the vice presidents. And last year, I completed the uh, nine-month Massachusetts Master Gardeners course. And it was one of the people, uh, one of my Master Gardener mentors, who asked if I was, would be interested in joining the tree committee. So I have attended three meetings. I went in September, October, November. Um, I also helped at the booth for town day, and um, now um, my official appointment, hopefully, yeah. Oh, thank you. I guess I will just have to make it official. It sounds like you're already doing uh, quite a bit of work, so <laughs> I, I'm very, I uh, greatly appreciate that. Mr. Greeley. Uh, move approval, and thank you very much for the service you've already provided 
and what you will continue to provide as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate second. That. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, an appointment to the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Jonathan Hyde. Hey, Jonathan. Again, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself, um, why you want to be on uh, ACAC? Um, I've been so, I have a personal interest in arts and culture and a professional interest. Um, I was uh, previously the deputy director for the tourism office for the state, and now I'm uh, working part time there um, on several issues. One is this sort of, I'm sort of the arts and culture person at the tourism office. I'm currently on the um, board of Old South Meeting House. I've served on the Mass Historic Commission, and uh, I sort of worked. I've worked extensively with the Mass Cultural Council. So I think um, I'm sort of at the stage in my life where I've got some time. I'd like to get involved in some aspect of the town, um, and I think my experience um, will be, a, you know, an asset to the to the Cultural Commission. Thank you very much. Um, I, I did see your resume, and I, I agree with you that I do think you will be an asset to the um, cultural, um, the Commission on Arts and Culture. Right. We'll, we'll Sorry. Call it now, <laughs> of course. Um, so, please, any uh, discussion from the board? Questions, Joe. Well, thank you very much for putting your, your uh, resume forward. You come um, kind of an auspicious time. You know, uh, you may know, may or may not know that a number of members of the um, the commission are meeting with um, some representatives of the Tourism and Economic Development Committee here, which is a Board of Selectmen committee, and we're discussing, among other things, um, the potential of, of applying for a, a cultural district designation, which is, you said you've worked with the MCC, so. Yes. The Mass Cultural Council, so you, you're familiar with that. So um, I really look forward to uh, getting to know you a little bit better and, and uh, hope that maybe you can help with uh, that effort as we go forward. Yes, I do. I mean, I, I think, um, I think collectively, when I sort of think about this, I think of um, sort of how residents or people outside Arlington might identify the town. You know, good school system, friendly town, great soccer town, those kinds of things. I think we should all sort of, our goal should be that um, we add the arts and culture. We do have a vibrant arts and culture uh, in the town. I think we have a lot more we can do and grow. Uh, I'd like to see all of us identify that as being an important part of, the, of Arlington. Well, thank you. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Kevin. Yeah, and along with all those other good things, you've noticed spectacular leadership in the town of Arlington, too, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, great government. Sorry, I, I, I admitted that. I'm a thousand percent not behind in, this. Not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, you know, thank you for the kind of experience you have in bringing that to us. And uh, I know I, for one, have a lot to learn and look forward to learning it from you and the commission. Thank you. Thank Full you. approval? Second. But did Joe already do that? Should we? Second, I didn't. But I didn't. Nope, I had second. really moved right there. We have a uh, motion and a second for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I have nothing. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, moving forward, uh, the an appointment to the Arlington Cultural Council. Renee Cameron. Hello. Hi, Renee. Um, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, why you want to be on the commission? Sure. Um, I Council. moved to Arlington a couple years ago, and um, around the same time, I, st I, I left um, a long career in a biotech pharma industry to pursue my love of photography and start my own photography business. And um, at that time, I started uh, exploring ways to be involved in my local community. So um, at Town Day, I was looking at all the tents and talking to people, and then I um, met with Eliza personally, and. Um, realize that that would be a great fit for me, so. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, comments? Diane. First, I'd like to move approval and say thank you. Oh. I know you know what you're doing because I looked at um, all the equipment you have and experience <laughs> and I know next to nothing. I don't recognize <laughs> hardly you. anything. So you obviously know what you're doing. Um, you. And I do appreciate um, hearing from you and others that um, you were sort of and kind of stepped into the role and started yeah. volunteering before even Yes, yeah, officially recognizing you, and I think yeah. Town Day is a fantastic. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the fir my first experience, and I hope to be involved through the ACC in the future. So, and th that's one of the positive offshoots of Town Day is yeah. we get to show what the town's about, and then we find these great gems, you and, and the previous appointee um, that we didn't know were out there. So it's sort of mm -hmm. a 
unique marketing tool. So I look forward to seeing your service in the future. Thanks. I look forward to it as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much you. for your service. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, finally, our last appointment for the evening um, to the Equal Opportunity Advisory Committee, Sarah Elizabeth Hershon. Hmm. I don't see Sarah here. Um, Do you want to move approval subject to the condition that at her next opportunity she comes in? Yeah, at her convenience. Yeah. That sounds good. Do we have a second? Second. second. Do we have a motion and a second? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five, nothing. Thank you all. Um, so I, I think that is, um, it's pretty special to have so many appointments on one night. I'm um, incredibly grateful that so many individuals are, you know, reaching out to the town and thinking how they can get involved. And um, that really is what makes our, uh, you know, Arlington a special place. And I am also happy to hear that we're picking up volunteers at Town Day, which is uh, very nice. Um, so with that being said, we will move on. Licenses and permits, a request for, uh, from Tango Restaurant for a late night event. Alyssa. Um, good Hello. evening, I'm Alyssa. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just looking to see if we can stay open a little bit later on that night till about one, just so people can bring in the new year and then have a little lag time in between. Thank you. Move approve, oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Um, second, and I, I just wanna be clear that um, the, what you're asking for, I believe, is to stay open until 1 a.m. on January 1st, 2015, right. not what we have. Right, yep. It I was just want to make sure that that yep. Is that on here? So, oh. resign. Okay. So, so we do have the correct. I just want to make sure yep. that that was clear yep. in, in terms of, um, it's a silly little thing, but you never know. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> okay, so as amended, um, a move approval that um, Tango can stay open until 1 a.m. on January 1st, 2015. Thank you very much. We have a motion second. 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 Further discussion from the board? Any discussion from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Have a good night. Happy New Year. <laughs> Moving forward, a request for a common victual license uh, for Jimmy's Pizzeria at 1508 Mass Ave. Um, Mr. Marr? Hello, how are you? Okay. Uh, my name is Wadamara. I live in Natick for 25 years. I run a place in, uh, on a place in Natick for 16 years, Italian restaurant. And then I asked for a permit for run the place, uh, Jimmy's Pizzeria. Great. Um, questions from the board? Did you bring any samples? No, yeah. <laughs> I went to a I'm still going to move approval subject to conditions as <laughs> set forth. Thank you. Um, Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, any dis discussion from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you for choosing Arlington. Thank you. Moving forward, request public entertainment license for Acetrone um, at 473 Mass Ave. Mr. Hugh. Good evening, board. Good evening, how are you? So uh, we want to do a little mariachi thing, you know, couple of guys coming there with their, with their dress and the guitars and everything, you know. So normally a mariachi band is a big thing, you know, they're like, it goes up to like 10 people. We don't have the space for that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we can do it like, you know, maybe two or I think they do like a, a duo or maybe like four people or something. Something, some, some entertainment for the people over here, of you know. They all come dressed up and everything. I wanted to do this a long time ago, but Marianne wouldn't let me, but now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, we, we got the okay from Michael at the uh, building. Mm. He wanted to see if we have sprinklers and stuff. So Great. we have all that, so it's good. Thank you. Um, so, uh, questions, discussion from the board? Yes, oh, Jeff. I'll move approval. Um, Second. And uh, how, how often are you looking to, uh, to have the entertainment? You know, these guys are tough to get, you yeah. know. There are a lot of Mexican restaurants in Boston, so yeah. they're, they're booked up. You know, yeah. so uh, as often as we can, you know, especially for special events, you know, yeah. mm. like Cinco de Mayo or, or like some kind of Mexican cultural stuff. Yeah. You know, we're doing a lot of uh, stuff with the State House right now. You know, yeah, and the Mexican consulate. You know, 
So every time they have an event, you know, we can coordinate something where we can, you know, uh, bring this entertainment into Arlington so that they come to Arlington too, you know. Mm. So that was the main thing. So we get it ready and, you know. So well, I'm very happy that. because, yeah. yeah, I mean, a number of our restaurants are starting to incorporate some yeah. uh, music as part of the program. And yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a weekly thing. Yeah. But, you know, whenever we can, we want to, it has to be quality. That's the main thing. Right. You know, of so course. Well, right. thank you uh, thank very you. much. Diane. Um, I just have a question, and I know we went through extensive conversations with um, the Common Ground, which is a business a block, or t a yeah. block away, um, and I think we had at the time some input from the Board of Health. Do you know, um, I think you said mariachi bands? Today. Yeah. Um, what kind of amplif amplification? Is it just acoustic guitar, or is it amplification? And the reason I say that is when we sure. had the same conversation with Common Ground, yeah. there were sort of stipulations in terms of, am I m remembering it correctly? Um, sort of stipulations in terms of level sure. and volume and possibly some sound remediation? Um, I don't know if Town Council or Marianne can... Um, yes, actually, um, Common Ground is still yet to come back. We kind of stopped the discussion on that uh, way back when, but they will be coming back, and they've been working with the Board of Health on, on different things and the neighbors there. Okay. So, so the short question important. would be... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. It would be, do you know in terms of what they're going to use for... You know, I don't know technically <coughs> what they, you know... Different bands are different, but it's definitely not like, you know, we don't need PA systems or, you know, major amplification. I mean, the place is so small. But I think sometimes, you know, just when the crowd kind of talks, mm -hmm. these guys use like a s very small like amplification just to, so that they're above that crowd, you know. Mm -hmm. But nothing major, you know, there are no pyrotechnics. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of the, the, what we told the common ground. Diane, there might, be, there might be some amplification. Mm -hmm. But then that depends on like from band to band, I think. Right, you know, right. I don't know the technical side of, you know. Well, I'm in favor of this. I would okay. just say yeah. that um, perhaps you, when you do know what your bands are, and if it's just sure. acoustic and really no um, amplification, yeah. that's fine. But if it's anything beyond that, I think it would endeavor you to speak with probably the Board of Health um, just to make sure. Sure. Because we have to hold everybody to the same standards. That's yeah, all. absolutely. I agree. You know. With that caveat. I'm Thank you very much. But, Joe. Thanks. I, I think uh, just as another caveat to that, I, I do, if I'm not, if I'm recalling correctly, I think with Common Ground, one of the, one of the differences was that they have the windows that open and, the, and the, the, uh, how close they are to the residences. And you don't, you're not going to have the doors or windows. No, we, we don't have open windows. So everything is going to be, you know, contained in the space, you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, and please, if you are using amplification, um, talk to the Board of Health. Sure. Um, any discussion from the audience? Seeing none. All those, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. Moving forward, Citizens Open Forum. Um, Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Anyone here for citizens open forum? Nobody has signed up. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, traffic rules and orders. Um, a vote for a special municipal employees for the Conservation Commission. Nathaniel Stevens. Good evening, Nathaniel. Good evening, Nathaniel Stevens from the Conservation Commission. Um, we have the, uh, I've submitted a request to have the, the board designated as special municipal employees. As you know, the board consists of volunteer members. Uh, we have all paid jobs to uh, be able to support our volunteer habit, per se. <laughs> and I think that uh, having us um, uh, have this designation allows us to pursue more opportunities in town. We have uh, engineers, we have other attorneys. I'm an attorney, we have uh, other attorneys on the board, uh, a, and, uh, a public health specialist and things like that. So I think that there are, <coughs> excuse me, are opportunities in town that perhaps come up for individuals, their families, their business partners that they're precluded from doing because of, we're, we're not designated special municipal employees. So. That's why we make, we make that request. Thank you very much. Questions from the board? Diane. Um, well, just sort of a comment, and then 
if it's appropriate to make a motion. Um, I think the situation that we're in is ideal because we have so many members, if not all the members of the Conservation Commission that come with such varied expertise um, and that really live and breathe this 24-7 uh, with the occasional time. You get some family time in there. I know having worked with, it, as my colleagues have, with the Conservation Commission on many issues, um, that the town has been assisted with the experience that the members of CONCOM bring to the table. Um, similar to other committees and commissions, but especially with the Conservation Commission where we have so many varying issues that, that you all have to deal with, including my shutting off all the CSOs in the alleyway, but I won't <laughs> go on that. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is move that the members of the Town of Arlington Conservation Commission are designated as special municipal, municipal employees in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 268A, subpart 1A. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Kevin. Uh, uh, if Nathaniel wants this, I want to give it to him 100%. How long have you been uh, on the commission now yourself? Sir? Uh, uh, almost 15 years. 15? Oh. You know, I served on the Conservation Commission for about three meetings. <laughs> this is true. Don Marquis appointed me. And I wanted to get involved in the town and stuff, and I run for town meeting. And he told me they met once a month, right? I go to the first meeting, and then they had three meetings more that week. <laughs> Never mind, you know, and I know there was a big issue up, but you are a special municipal employee in so many ways. But <laughs> I support this 100%. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Further discussion? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, Joe. Thank you. Um, this is actually for town council. I, I read um, the former town council's memo. Is it my understanding that by making these designations, that we, in addition to increasing the pool of potential candidates, that we're providing some protection to both the, um, those who are serving as well as to the town? Would that be fair to say? I think that's a fair, Mr. Kerr, I think that's a fair characterization. Uh, the critical piece here is that uh, by designating them as uh, special municipal employees, it affords them an appropriate additional amount of flexibility under state ethics laws, which is valuable not only for those individuals, but also for the town. Uh, the two chief areas that it would impact are their ability to appear before town boards and commissions. Yeah. It doesn't obviate the need for certain disclosures, uh, but also uh, allows them to have very limited interest in something like a town contract as appropriate. It would not in any way, shape, or form uh, suggest that a conservation commission member should be participating in a matter of interest before the conservation commission. Of course. So it, yes, it does afford a significant uh, uh, protection for the town and those individuals uh, in, in terms of uh, making sure that we're complying with state ethics law. Okay. I'm just wondering, like annually when we um, send out, I know that typically the council will send out a reminder to uh, members of different boards and commissions in the, in the, the town of you know the requirements of ethics training or and um, reminders about the open meeting law. Does it make sense to remind them that this designation does exist if they choose to come and exercise and ask us to to approve it? Just in, in terms of uh, making sure they realize that that protection is available and should be availed of. If sure. So uh, the reason uh, uh, the the previous town council Ms. Rice's memo was right on point and, and perfect and didn't really need to be amended in any way we should perform, but that was transmitted some years ago to uh, all the committees and commissions. And uh, with this year's uh, annual reminder to do your state ethics uh, biannual training or for new members for first training, I'd be happy to attach that along with it to remind folks that if it's appropriate for their committee and commission or board that they should, can come before the Board of Selectmen to seek that status. That sounds great. Because I think before I joined the Selectmen, I don't think I was even aware of this designation. So it's great to have a reminder. Yeah. There's a fairly limited number that have the designation right now. But I think that's primarily a function of the fact that some committees is probably not necessary. It's not probably. There's probably a lot of committees that it's not necessary, but there's also probably some that aren't yeah. aware of that option. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thank you for bringing this to our attention, Nathaniel. Um, it does seem like that this is a simple win-win for the town so, and for the Conservation Commission. So that being said, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Thanks very much. Moving forward, request uh, one overnight uh, parking space at 57 Milton Street from uh, Dave and Ellen um, Setzer. Um, Mr. Setzer? That is me. Um, Please uh, say a few remarks. Okay, thanks. 
57 Milton Street is a downstairs condo in a two-family, two-condo house. My wife and I are leasing it uh, from the condo owner. When we leased it back in June, we weren't made aware of any parking restrictions uh, in the condo agreement with the upstairs owner. About two months ago, the upstairs unit was sold to a new couple, um, and subsequently their uh, real estate agent and uh, they decided to enforce a restriction that's in the condo agreement that limits each tenant to one car. We have two. Uh, the space that exists is a, a two-car garage and then a driveway leading up to that. Uh, uh, our landlord uh, spoke to the town about the options that we have, one of which is applying for a non-street exemption. And uh, we also looked at the option of just uh, parking other places. And we decided the best thing, because my wife and I both work, we go in different directions, uh, the best thing to do is to try to ask for the exemption. I understand that they're not lightly given, uh, but I'm making the request anyway, and I appreciate the consideration. Thank you um, very much. Uh, discussion questions from the board, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing this. Uh, sure. First, I'll say, you know, I sympathize with the the, um, the plight, but you are correct. We, we haven't been traditionally lightly giving them, especially the last couple of years, you know, we've recognized that, you know, so many people have come to the board with right. special situations that we did uh, vote to put this before the voters, and overwhelmingly they did come back to us and say that they supported the, um, the restrictions on, on overnight um, parking um, in the town. Um, we also, as, as part of the process, we, we do nevertheless consult with public safety and both the police and fire department have also come back to us with concerns. So unfortunately, I won't be able to support the, 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 the request, although I, I sympathize with the, the, um, the, the plight. I, I think it's really unfortunate that your landlord didn't uh, so do we. <laughs> uh, we're, we actually, um, uh, we were told we had to be the ones to make the application. The landlord is really the person, he, you know, there's nothing in our lease that says we can't have two cars. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we are. So I understand and I, uh, I appreciate your time anyway. And I, re and I really, I'm sorry that, that I won't be able to support the request. Understand. Yeah. Um, Diane? I guess I'll, I'll move no action. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just a, a couple of things. Um, we do give out overnight parking uh, permits at Hardy School as, as a possible. I'm sorry, which school? Hardy. Okay. The elementary school there. Um, you can, that's through the treasurer. Uh, yeah. I can't even talk. Through the treasurer's office. I think it's a dollar a day, a dollar a night. A dollar um, th th there's that option for you. And then something that's unfortunately caught before the horse, you kind of passed this already, but I know an increasing number of um, homes in Arlington two and three family have gone condoized. Um, and my neighbor across the street, it took him probably an extra three months to sell his two family as two condos, because one of the things he was doing is, a lot of times you get two condos, you get two completely right. different own people living there, and a lot of the times they're calling the police, whether it's somebody likes music all night long. So he put a caveat in, um, the sale of his two condo units, where he set up sort of this association, it was like a CAA, I forget what it stood for, that both of the condo residents, condo owners, agreed to a process that if there was an issue, he already set up sort of a mediation vehicle for them to sit down with a third party um, to iron out these things. Now, that's not something that's available to you right now. Um, I don't know if you can speak to the landlord of the unit to see if that could possibly be negotiated, but that's one of the things, and I'm amazed by how many calls the police department gets where they're asking right. us to enforce, and it's really out of our hands, and similar to this. So I, so I, I put the Hardy School option before you as okay. well as maybe in the future I have a conversation with your landlord if you can come up with that process. That it's we'll be not moving required. as soon as we can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I hope that you stay in Arlington. Oh, well, um, well, I've been here for 15 years. I'm not going anywhere, so. <laughs> So um, if you go to the next one, make sure there's one of them. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I'm, I agree with uh, my colleagues. The, these are, are tough votes for us. Understood. Um, and I, I understood it was uh, low probability, but I appreciate your time anyway. Yeah, well, and thank you for joining. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, yeah I, I apologize as well. Once police and fire both have objections to it, 
There's no, you can't, one in the garage and one behind it, there's not enough room? We do that. It's just, you know, our upstairs neighbors, you know, we don't want to block them out. If they come home at midnight, then we're out moving our car and that's, is it inconvenient? Yes, and we're gonna continue to just to live with it. So, then that's all we can do. Sorry. Well, I appreciate your time anyway. Thank you, and I, thank I you. hope you enjoyed our meeting. <laughs> uh, it uh, wasn't bad, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We, I'll second the motion. Thank, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Close. Thank you. Moving on. For approval, the fund balance policy for Sims Property Fund. Mr. Flanagan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have provided the board um, with an outline, uh, with a memo that outlines the brief history and intended purpose of the Sims Property Fund. As we concluded uh, FY 2014 uh, and worked with our auditors, Powers and Sullivan, one of their recommendations was that the town develop a fund balance policy for the Sims Property Fund um, and bring it before the board uh, for its consideration and approval. Um, so uh, attached to that memo is uh, uh, the draft language that we've put together uh, for the policy. Essentially, uh, the policy states that an amount equal to the annual debt service uh, payment for the SIM site will be uh, raised on the property tax and deposited uh, into the SIMS property fund, in addition to uh, a $5,000 allowance, if you will, for uh, any potential legal costs uh, in the future uh, that are incurred related to the site. You know, at this time, we don't anticipate there to be any, um, but it's there uh, more as a safeguard. Um, so the town uh, will maintain a, a debt obligation on the site uh, through FY22. Um, so what I've done is I put a, a summary table at the bottom of the, uh, the proposed language uh, that shows you what the debt service payment is um, in FY16 and beyond, uh, what that legal uh, reserve would be, and then uh, fund balance not to exceed uh, the bottom line there. So again, our intention that this would be in place at least through um, 2022. Um, combined Sims property tax revenue in Brightview exceeds uh, the, the cash value of both the debt service payment and the legal reserve. Thank you yep. very much, Andrew. And um, I will say this at the audit advisory committee that both um, Shakira and I were at, this, um, this came up, and I, I do appreciate uh, you working on it so quickly. Um, that being said, questions, comments? I move approval of the policy as presented by the uh, Deputy Town Manager. Thank you. Second. Second. Uh, further discussion? Mr. Greeley. I just want clarification. So this will come from property taxes only at the same site? Right, so the, the, the debt service payment associated with uh, the purchase of the site right. um, will be paid directly from property taxes from the site. From the site. Yep. Okay. All right. Further discussion? Seeing none. Discussion from the audience? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Moving on. Um, the discussion and adoption, uh, Draft Selectman's Handbook. Chapters seven and eight, Mr. Greeley. So, um, uh, th this is on fees and on um, st uh, starting on our first policy on the alcohol uh, policy. And uh, the goal here is for us to get it to one one page for the handbook, but then in the second uh, material have the full policy. Uh, available and right now Eve is working on uh, taking that the policy that currently exists and then just bringing everything together so that we'll have one uh, complete document by the end of things but what this is that you're looking at is uh, a new selectman any citizen of the town uh, who wants to understand about fees uh, could, could get this through chapter 7 and then chapter 8 two pages on the uh, on the summary of our alcohol licenses. So, comments, changes. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Mr. Kira. Additions, deletions. Hmm. Um, thank you. No, I, again, great piece of work. Um, I think my my comment isn't isn't really on the um, the substance of it. It's um, I'm wondering about the organization uh, uh, of it. Um, the, and what I mean by that is um, I'm wondering if we're not better served by outlining our authority to grant um, licenses, 
but including an, an, appendix, an appendix in the form of a table that lists each of these licenses. I see you try to get it, get at that with Section 7, mm -hmm. um, but we also list some other licenses as well um, in Section 8, and if we would not better serve by having an appendix that would be more frequently updated that would list the license, um, the fee, the number um, available. Uh, for example, I, I see it specifically in the uh, alcohol licenses. We we have written into the handbook, you know, 15 issued, but somebody could come in next week and then we'd have to update the, the, the handbook. And it might be easier if we just have one table that's an appendix and there's always, you know, we anticipate that will be updated with um, the supporting information. But that's just a suggestion on organization. I think that substantively, um, I, I like it. That's another great piece of work. I guess. I'm, I, yeah, sorry. No, Mr. Greeley. I'm unclear. Um, that that is what we're trying to list there. Is but and yes. Yeah, so I, so obviously, right now, all alcohol we can't we can't grant anymore. We've given out 15 that's out right. of 15. That's right. 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 That's right. Uh, package right. stores, five but, out of five. Um, but wine and malt only. Right. Yeah, we that that could be a moving moving target. For and us. so that when that is, we would go in and change. We that. change this. That would be the goal. Okay. Right, uh, Maryam. Um, to my understanding, we on um, we can have any number of wine and malt the way mm -hmm. legislation. Yeah, but we're talking about more how we're displaying it. Uh, oh. Can I interject? Yeah, I think that this type of thing is really just an administrative change. I don't think a, a vote of the board needs to be taken to note that there are 20 licenses versus 19 because right. what you're going to be voting, the, the relevant piece of this is the is the summary of the actual policy. A change in statistics and figures you know, I don't think would represent a meaningful alteration that would require the board's approval because the board would have voted to approve the additional license first. I think what Mr. Kiro is sort of suggesting is you know, why not have a table that has all of the uh, fees and how many licenses are given in a year in one sort of spreadsheet format? And is, is that what you're suggesting, Mr. Kiro? Yeah, it's just a matter of what, what's the easiest for, for purposes of version control. As we go about, you know, issuing licenses, how is it, is it easier to go in and, and update the handbook or to just go to that one table? And, in one place, but I, I, I mean, I take it either way. Substantively, I have no problems with, hmm. with what's here. And, and I guess what I would do is look to um, Mr. Greeley, Mrs. Sullivan, and town council in terms of what document works best for the actual administration and oversight in the office, whether it's creating this new spreadsheet and dropping some of that information in there and who, who uh, maintains it and, and contributes to it, or if there's something that already exists that is already there, you don't have to recreate, or a compilation of the two, that we already have a framework in there, now that we're going through this exercise, something may be added on to, um, to get to Mr. Kiro's um, goal in terms of um, having worked in there, I know what, you know, what it could encompass if it doesn't exist, and um, in, in the future it should exist in some form, and I'd be interested in what the uh, Selectman's Office staff yeah. um, makes as a recommendation as the best tool to get that down cognizant of everybody's time. Am I sort of hitting it, Joe? Yes, you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, you are. Um, do you mean, I just want to clarify one thing. Do you want to know uh, limitations, or do you just want to know numbers that we have currently, or both? is on part of the just this. what format is easiest for version control as we take votes going forward okay. on, right. on, on licenses right. or if we change fees or, or whatnot is it easier to go in and, and update the handbook and the, and the policy sections you know and, and pick out the numbers here or is it easier to have one one place where you can do hmm. do them I've, if I, um, I I understand where Joe's come from I think that that could make it easier so uh, I'm thinking that when when this is done we'll have this big packet um, you know say with the handbook or hopefully not that big of a packet with the handbook and um, but perhaps in, in, instead of you know having every license that comes out um, we have to go in and actually change this document having a kind of having it in an appendix or in a different area that has the actual number given out might make sense. Um, although, I guess I'd have to see what it's like first um, before we could really take an action on it. 
Mr. Yeah, Chairman, if I may, is my sort of understanding and recollection that, that part of what we're trying to do here is, is put together a document that primarily serves the selectmen and the public. Um, I would imagine that the office is going to always have its own separate set of things that are convenient for the office, um, whereas this is intended to be a little bit more of a public document rather than and a sort of efficient note and sort of, I think what Ms. Mahan was, was, was sort of uh, pointing to. So I, I, I would concur with the chairman's assessment that one of the things that would be valuable in this exercise is to see what the completed book looks like mm -hmm. and then assess, as Mr. Kiro is suggesting, hey, is this the way this information can best be presented? Um, with respect to the fees and charges and the uh, number of licenses, that wouldn't be very difficult for us to move, move around. That'd probably be some of the easiest information for us to say, either we can have, a, have it be duplicative or we can move it from this to just a spreadsheet. It's really the policy, I think, and this is the point Ms. Mahan was sort of raising uh, a couple of minutes ago. It's really the, pol the substantive policies that um, we want to have be relatively uh, secure and agreed upon. Um, Mm -hmm. for the time being. I don't know if Mr. Greeley, I hope I have our correctly articulated this. Brilliantly so, I would say. <laughs> but I, mean, um, I compliment you on your tie today, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd actually like to see it, Joe. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, mm. uh, I'm, I'm not visioning what you're saying yeah. well enough. Uh, but if you could give us a little sample of it or... or yeah, you I know, can. There's some way we could present this that would work better for people. I have no... No objections. Yeah, to I could take a all, crack but, at it. I could take a crack. A um, couple of points I would like to make additionally, if I may, that it's very important on, on the alcohol policy that it's clear to people these are non-transferable. The license yeah. doesn't go with the establishment. Mm -hmm. um, the the owners uh, cannot sell the licenses. Um, if if they wanted to, the the new owner would have to go through the entire process again. Um, and it, 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 it reverts back to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the other thing I'd just like to raise is that, you know, as we now head into town meeting season, and as we know, and I'm sure Marie is watching us at home when she probably should be in bed asleep, but we're now six months that uh, our own staff has been really working very, very hard, and uh, Marianne has worked very hard on this with us. By way of saying, we're probably going to slow down a bit on the handbook that we may not be every meeting able to bring something like this in front of you, uh, but we're not losing sight of it either. We just, I just, uh, we, we have, and I, I couldn't have done it without Marianne, without Doug, without Steve, uh, without Eve, without Andrew, um, uh, gotten us this far. And we will continue, but we're just heading into a very busy season for town council, for the board of selectmen and staff. So. In the select tones, busiest season as well. So that <laughs> we're saving that for new business. <laughs> yes, it is a select tone season as well. You can sing so any other changes or recommendations to either the fees or the policy summary? Not seeing none. Do we have a uh, motion? I, 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 again, always I'm. I'm Oh, I should say right right away. I move that we accept uh, chapter seven and eight for the handbook. Thank you second. very much. The motion is second. Further discussion. Seeing none. Um, I thank you all for your work. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Um, correspondence received. The ACMI annual audit. Um, a request for tax input. For regarding the Spy Pond Tennis Courts renovation from uh, Joe Connolly, the Director of Recreation, and a request to memorialize Robert McMurray, um, McMurray, McMurray, I'm sorry, um, from our colleague Dan Dunn, who um, unfortunately could not be here with us tonight. Kevin. Move receipt. Move receipt, and specifically uh, on our colleague's request that we do. Uh, indeed, um, uh, send this request to the uh, memorial committee uh, with our recommendation for approval. Thank you. Um, do, would you like to um, ask for tax input on the? 
Spy yeah, well, I was just talking about the Robert McMurray. Okay, we'll do that separately. Okay. Um, we have a, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And then I'll move that we refer to TAC on, on the tennis court re renovation. Is that what you want, uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, please. Yes, sir. Uh, and I, I would like to note that in uh, Mr. Connolly's request, he does ask about um, some traffic calming measures for that area, and I, I believe that at the last meeting yeah. we took up that. So, so I, I would ask that they perhaps um, consider Mr. Connolly's first request and, um, real, and acknowledge that we have already um, dealt with the second one. Um, if that's okay with everyone else, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed. Thank you very much. Um, on to new business. Marion. Uh, no new business. Thank you. Doug. Uh, one small bit of new business. As the board may recall, several meetings ago there was a discussion about what was required in order to change uh, the speed limit. Uh, a couple of members of the board remembered pieces of the process. I just wanted to update the board on that process without going into too much detail. Basically, a conversation has to be admitted, uh, has to be started with the uh, local um, district of uh, Mass DOT. Um, there's an engineering study that's required. Um, at some point, it would require a board vote on a recommendation after uh, the engineering study, but as I believe Ms. Mahan or Mr. Greeley recalled, it still has to be approved both by the RMV and MassDOT. So uh, folks were correct in their recollection that the board certainly couldn't do it on its own, but the board does have the authority to sort of um, take a vote to uh, try to amend the speed limit after there's been an engineering study and some initial work. So uh, the town manager's office will have to do the groundwork for seeing if it's feasible and appropriate to address that issue um, and then report to this, this board um, once there's some initial conversations with um, the Department of Transportation. Thank you very much. Could I just? Um, yes, please. I, I want to thank you and the uh, town manager for <clears throat> following up on that. And then it's just sort of one step out, especially with Mass DOT, if um, we could sort of get yours or Mr. Chaplin's opinion. <clears throat> Sometimes you go in seeking request and you start a process with Mass DOT, and because of what their current rules and regulations are, you are subjected to something else. So one of the things that I know is, is, is being looked at is also saying, okay, if we do go down this road, especially with Mass DOT, um, knowing what their rules and regulations are, what probably that will kick in so that we can take that under consideration along with the town manager um, if this is the avenue we want to explore. That, that's right. I, I think it'll be important to have all of our ducks in a row right. and to really even assess the feasibility of an engineering study mm -hmm. uh, before initiating too formal of a conversation with the Mass DOT. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farmer. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Flannery. Just very quickly, I'm pleased to report uh, this past week, uh, Town Manager Adam Chapdelaine and his wife Rita welcomed their first child, uh, Pearl Avis Chapdelaine. She arrived seven pounds, nine ounces. Uh, both Pearl and Mama doing great, and we hear Dad's doing pretty well too. So uh, we hope he's uh, enjoying his time with his family. Thank you very much, Andrew. That is great news. Kevin. Well, first of all, we'd like to invite Pearl to join the select <laughs> tones when she's ready. <laughs> 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 the uh, season, uh, we will be, we have three gigs lined up. This, uh, a week from this Saturday at the Cusick Towers, we're going to do a morning uh, concert at, at uh, quarter of 10 at Cusick. On the 16th at 7 o'clock, we'll be at Drake Village. And on the 20th at 2 o'clock, we're going to be at the Bright View. So uh, we're going to. You know, now that we know that the tax and the debt exclusion will be paid off, they will be up there singing. <laughs> All the, anybody who likes to sing Christmas carols are invited to join us. All of you are required to join us. 
Thank you, sir. But if they do join you one time, they're in for life. That's it. So that's it. watch you, out. You only have to show up that's once. A, that's so. a little caveat that Kevin <laughs> fails to mention. Um, Ms. Mahan. Uh, just one thing, and sort of piggybacking on what Mr. Grayley, Kevin said earlier regarding the Selectman Handbook. Um, just had have conversations with the town council, the town manager, and Mrs. Sullivan um, about, yes, we're getting the warrant ready, but one of the other things just sort of to set as a possible goal, um, I know about a year, 14 months ago, when um, I think Ms. Rice was here, so it might be a little bit longer, we started discussing uh, along the Hackney licenses, the insurance coverage um, requirement that it varied amongst different um, Hackney applicants um, and that one of the things that was sort of the uh, motivating factor for it was the Globe Spotlight had done a, a story on three different people who were in taxi cabs that suffered consequences but the coverage for bodily injury was only 20,000. I do work for a law firm that um, was handling one of those and I know it can go up into the six figures. So we were doing that. Um, we were initially waiting because um, we had heard from the State House that the in Insurance Regulation Commission was holding hearings on it. Um, it's sort of ballooned more and now we have another political issue of Uber. So I was speaking with um, Mrs. Sullivan and the um, town manager that what I'd like to do is get proactive um, so that possibly the first week in January, we get some um, recommendations from Patrick Quinn, who appeared before us, who's in, in insurance liability, from town council, who appeared before us, I mean, who <laughs> works first and speaks to us, and then at the last meeting in January, have final vote and discussion, because I don't want to wait any longer on um, recommendations from the insurance commission, because they've also sort of tied into that Uber um, conversation. And what I'd like to do is set, um, on recommendations that this board agrees, with the caveat that if we move that schedule to we don't have the initial board info till the end of January and then the second meeting February, I'd leave that to the chairman in the selectman's office. But I'd like to set something, and I guess I would ask through the chair um, either an answer right now or in the future, you know, am I correct that the board of selectmen can set, oh, and I did ask uh, Mrs. Sullivan to provide us with what's the least amount of coverage and what's the most. The newer applicants are coming in on their own with higher coverage, just so we have that as a range. But is it my understanding correct that the Board of Selectmen, we can set a uniform um, insurance liability uh, policy coverage that um, if the state comes out with recommendations in the future, if ours are better, we can keep what we have, or if what they recommend is even a better thing, we can turn and adopt to that. Um, but my question would be, can we set something, and if for some reason the state, for whatever reason, political <coughs> or not, doesn't really come close to us, can we still set our own recommendation for our Hackney licenses concerning insurance coverage? And if you, you don't have to give an answer tonight unless you want. I, I just want to make sure I understand. So the, the, is the question, do, do you want to resolve this before the insurance commission comes out with this recommendation? If, if the so you'd like to set a, set a rate and then, I mean, I, I think practically speaking, the, the first question is, can we set a rate that's above what the insurance commission recommends, period? Then the second question is, what's the most practical way of adjusting that rate if the insurance commission comes in above or below what we believe the rate should mm -hmm. be? And I'll address both those questions right. and formally Thank answer you. them for you. Thank you. Um, I will, um, I, I think that the first meeting in January is a target date. Um, have we spoken to Patrick um, on that, if we're asking him for a recommendation? I, I don't think it's appropriate to ask him for the first week in January with the holidays here. He actually did give a recommendation okay. back last time that he spoke. I would want to verify it, just okay. to make sure he still feels what he had sent me is correct. Um, uh, you know, I, I'll shoot that off to him You know, tomorrow the next day to try to give him time, and I'll ask him if he's ready. I'll include that information in your board info, and then we'll plan it as an agenda item. When is okay, is yeah. this the recommendation? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I am. Um, okay, yeah. That we'll we'll work on it. I, I think maybe the second meeting in January might work better. I'm just working with holiday. Yep. Yeah, we will. Um, but we'll work on that. And we won't lose sight of it. Thank you. Thank you. Joe. Uh, I just wanted to uh, I wanted to congratulate the uh, the chamber on another successful uh, first lights uh, event. Um, you'll recall that the board uh, waived its Saturday 
parking fees to try to encourage uh, a shop local um, initiative. Um, I saw Mr. Grilly uh, making the rounds uh, on Saturday. Um, really, where were you, Joe, when you signed it? <clears throat> I was... Um, Incognito? Let's say I was, in, in spirit, I was, I was with a visitor from the north. <laughs> um, but the night before, I'd been with some visitors from the south. Um, uh, we had about 200 people uh, came out for the, uh, the tree lighting, and I think it was the first community event on the newly redone Broadway Plaza, which was fantastic. It was a fantastic place for it. And in attendance was the um, city manager from Big Riviere, South Africa, and, and uh, a choral group that, from South Africa. You'll recall we adopted a proclamation uh, for them who help, came and helped to, um, to uh, usher it in. It was the day after the first anniversary of Nelson Mandela's death. Oh, wow. And um, it also just happened to be the same night that they said they had their light festival back in oh, wow. uh, South Africa, which was uh, fantastic. Um, so I, I did want to um, just say that this, in addition to being a, a commerce event, this, this brought together a lot of other groups. Some of the local churches had their groups out singing. I got to see the, the Audison a cappella group was w wandering around uh, Capitol Square with the, uh, Corey Gaffney's group. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank also, uh, th bless you, the manager, um, as well as some of our, our town uh, employees, Jimmy Dodge and Jimmy Largenton, Helped a lot. You know, everybody was enjoying the lights up and down the avenue. I mean, DPW puts a lot of work into those, and they made sure that the logistics were there for the tree and the tree lighting because the power there is hooked into the fire station, which is under construction, and, and, it, and it came off without a hitch. Um, uh, Sergeant Padrini and his, uh, some of his officers were on hand to help um, at the tree lighting to uh, make sure the pedestrians were uh, safe and such, and then, of course, the fire department uh, gave their assistance the next day to um, a number of elves and uh, that visitor from the from the north um, so uh, it was a, a great community event and I want to thank all of those folks for helping to make it make it happen so thank, thank you very you. much Mr. Kara. thank you um, I have no new business so move to adjourn sorry second we have a motion a second all those in favor please say aye, aye. aye. thank you everyone